Ms. Rita Martin, put your hands together. She's going to do a presentation on history of good people. The last woman when I went to Italy weeks left ago. Um, we need more to go to Pichu Tak, KWC, and we have a lot of people who are going to be able to do it. I wanted to uh, uh, play, uh, play uh, a special uh, make a special acknowledgement to all our ancestors who have passed before before us and who have taught us all the things here that are um, their way of life. Everything that they did was uh, made from their own area. So I'll do. I will go real quickly. Uh, because I don't have very much time. But the first thing I wanted to show you is this uh, pin. Uh, this is a moose hide uh, for making moose hides in our northern area anyway, in uh, northern Alberta, the Bush people. Moose was one of our, uh, the, uh, the one that we uh, hunted for and ate and made clothing. For example, we'd make little candy moccasins, um, we made um, shelter. In the beginning, there was a teepee. I was going to hold that up. In the beginning, the teepees were made out of moose hide, and then when the, the Europeans came in, then we had canvas. Same with the canvas tent. We would probably live in the canvas about seven, I mean, the tent for about uh, seven months. Seven, yes, and then eventually we moved to a cabin right behind you. And then we would live in a winter cabin for about four or five months. We uh, lived off the land. Our method of travel was toboggan. We'd have about six dogs, really good dogs, that would uh, take us around. And I just wanted to show a little more about that. Uh, this is a replica of what a real uh, toboggan would look like. That's what we used to travel with, Nyanan, in our area. It's made out of birch because birch is a very hard wood and uh, the wrapper is made out of canvas. In the springtime, about this time of the year, um, the canvas would be painted at the bottom so we didn't get wet. So they buy uh, boat paint, I guess, and they paint the bottom so that uh, you kept your things very dry. In the back here would be your little daily lunch or maybe your uh, um, dog chain, something that you would carry. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what we had for traveling. We also had boats that we made. And this is uh, the boys, when they were younger, they were taught how to carve. So they would make this um, toys. They were uh, taught how to carve. They were the, the fathers with the mentors. They needed them to be skilled in everything they did. For example, this one here is another replica of a rat canoe made out of birch bark years ago. That's what uh, they made the uh, birch bark with. Uh, they put the paddles in here, so then when you're going in portage, you would put that over your shoulders and this would stay, stay on. The canoes were small, so it was easy for one man to paddle around and uh, get their little food, um, ducks. Uh, muskrats, whatever. And then the women were really good at sewing, so they used to make their husbands a nice um, tobacco pouch because men used to travel long ways so it would fit your pocket. In the back there, you had paper, uh, uh, cigarette papers, and inside you had your tobacco. And then we also had um, sewing kits, which are Yeah, the sewing kit, this one here, would have been made for a man who was going out in the bush. Because long ago, the people used to go out in the bush and spend a lot of time out there hunting and trapping. So they needed their own little uh, sewing kit in case the wrapper got uh, ripped or their clothing. And uh, they made it very small so everything would fit into the... Um, the, uh, the toboggan. This would be for inside the cabin and, and here you'd probably have a fine comb, 
Uh, your combs inside here, usually this was hung above the basin in the house, in your cabin. Some of you are probably familiar with that. And then we also had a, a moss bag. Oops. A moss bag. Uh, we were all with, like, we were moss bag babies, Alice and I, because uh, um, that's how it was back in the, until about late 50s, I guess the, uh, we all had moss. I mean, we were all in a, in a, in a moss bag. And then, of course, in the summertime, the, the women would go and collect really nice moss. They would dry it up, put it in bags, and that would be kept for their, uh, for their babies. This is probably be like a little bush, inner bush, because in a bush you don't have to uh, dress up and walk down. And then this one would be for like if you're going to community in town visiting, they would have a nice little lace hat with um, something to put over the baby's um, face so we don't get uh, from the sun or even from the uh, mosquitoes. This here is a um, uh, goose, goose wings. And um, this was for when we were in a, living in a tent, this was our broom. So we would be cleaning the, the, uh, our tent with this. And um, the smaller ones, the men used to use that to uh, put in a three-in-one oil and that they would um, uh, oil their guns so that uh, they weren't rusty, you know, the chamber. And the women, what they used to do is they used to use a three-in-one oil and then clean their sewing machine, you know, those little singers that they had long ago. So uh, to protect their stuff, they just made, they made everything possible to, uh, to make, to make uh, a life or, uh, you know, very good. This is like uh, um, calling a moose. She's got, you, you wanna demonstrate that? Um. Men used to go in when they were going to go hunting. They would, they didn't have that many shells, so that's how they would do. They go, if they knew where the moose was, and the moose would go to them, and then that's how they got their, uh, their, uh, the moose. Also, this is very good for it. This is good birch, birch hardwood. You could make your snowshoes out of that. Everybody made their own snowshoes. Um, the women were good at webbing. So they would use um, babish. They would um, uh, put that in the water, and once it was nice and nice, uh, and once it was saturated, then they would web web the uh, the yeah the snowshoes. Um, this is uh, bear grease. Bear grease is good for well, you could use it for your bannock, dry meat, or sometimes people use it for medicinal purpose. Um, so that was always handy to have. Um, long ago, we, the, everybody used to make their own nets. So here is, um, there's uh, the needles there. This would be the size of the, the net. And um, here are the um, needles. These were made by um, Spruce Tree. And, um, yeah, everybody made that. My brother made these, so people in um, their own camps made whatever. That bridge the basket was made by my father. He was out in the bush, and uh, they were going to have a feast. And uh, his job was to get a to make a, uh, a basket. So all he did was go to a tree, and there was birch there. He, he took the uh, the birch out, and then he used the 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 webbing from the spruce tree, like he would uh, look at the spruce tree um, and then pull it out towards the tree and then he would get the, 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 the spruce but, and lace it up. Uh, they use a birch tree, a willow tree to make that circular. So this is, it was made in 1980, 80, probably in the late 80s, probably last lifetime. This one is another basket. Um, this is more modern, on. modern type. I made this, but the reason why I wanted to show you the, um, um, uh, yeah, this um, cattails. You see the mere bull rushes? That was good for in the summertime. We used to go and eat bull rushes. 
and uh, that was a really good uh, snack. It was healthy. And in the winter time, when it was very, very cold, the men used to break that uh, the the bulrush, and then they'd make it as an insulation for their mittens. And if it was extremely cold, like maybe minus 30 or 40, they would make a little tiny ball and put it in their nose. So they would, when they went outside, they wouldn't have to inhale all that cold air. So that was a really good way of uh, 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 keeping warm, I guess, in extreme uh, weather. The grand, the, the old ladies were uh, dressed like this. <laughs> they put her legs down. <laughs> They, were, they always had long, long dresses. <laughs> and they were always dark. So they looked really fast and they had little wraparounds. See the wraparounds? Uh, the hair was always braided. They were always, always uh, babysitting, looking after the grandchildren, talking to them very, very nicely. Uh, so the children will grow up happy. Everybody in the camp was always happy. Singing and playing and uh, visiting. Um, the, then what happened if there was no, uh, uh, we didn't have um, fly talks or uh, go, I'm just gonna, uh, mosquito repellent back in the day. So what they did was they put beads in front of the baby's hat. So when the baby's being carried in the back by um, the mom, like you know, uh, the, the, the mother wouldn't go see the baby, right? Because it'll be in the back here. Uh, while she's up there cooking. So the mosquito or uh, bee would go to the baby's face. The baby just has to move. And then uh, the bees would chase the, the, the mosquitoes away. So that was another good way. There was a dog whip that everybody used to make uh, the men um, when they were driving dog team. This was a very important thing to have because if you wanted your dogs to uh, go to the next camp and you're wanting to, it's, you're hungry, you're going to have lunch. Well, they used to practice whip so the dogs can go faster. They go, I mean, and then there was two types of, yeah, yeah, they sleep. Yeah, I'll, get it, I'll just get out so we can demonstrate them. Long ago, the men always used to have white shirts when they went to town. But occasionally, they had to do some work outside, right? Maybe bring some wood in. And they wanted to keep their shirt clean, so uh, they would go out and do their chores. And then after they came in, they take the sleeves back out, and the shirt would still be nice and clean. So that's what that was for. Um, what else is there? Yeah, I think that's. And then we have rat root that we always used to have around. It's good for the medicinal toothaches, uh, colds. There's spruce gum that we used to have for chewing gum, the dry one, yes. And then the one that was kind of uh, liquidy that was good for making your own ointments. So uh, if you got cut, that's what you would be using. So the reason why we wanted to do this is because I wanted to share a little bit of history. I do have write-ups about it for the teachers who are here. I do have uh, things that, um, that describes everything. So if you want that, I could give you a copy of that, and then later on you can come and browse and see what we have here. Say thank you very much. Um, Hi, my name is Alice. I'm uh, Rita's younger sister. <laughs> um, I, I just wanted to uh, share uh, a couple of thoughts with you and how it's important for us to continue uh, doing these kind of things. Now this, I believe, is just an example of what all of you have in your own communities. So when we talk about let's be the change, you be the change. And in regards to our way of knowing, our culture, what's important to us in our identity, our guest speaker spoke about it. And um, I think that because we've been you know, colonized all these years, the assimilation plan that has been going on for many, many years. How do we be the change in today's world? And this is an example. So in, in order for us to practice 
you know, uh, practice makes perfect, right? And, you know, every time today, when we go to different functions, different events, so where you find our ways is behind in, in different rooms. It's never one of the priorities. I don't see it as one of the priorities when we go to events. It, it's just become, it's nobody's fault. It's just become a practice for us. So when we want to practice living, what we heard Dale Wasses talk about in bringing our culture back, you know, being proud of who we are, and our guest speakers talking about who we are, and being proud of who we are. We want to be honest. We want to be real. And today, practicing will make it perfect. So, Rita, my sister, who's been doing this for many, many years, is an example of what you have today. And when we meet each other, you notice, uh, without even saying anything to each other, we just accept one another, that we are another. You're like me. So I don't have to say anything to you because we just know that you know what I know. And for us, it's, it's so important to then take that one step further and say that this way of knowing is our way of knowing. It's not just the Cree. It's Dene, it's Ojibwe, it's Mohawk, it's, it's all of us together. So, you know, how do we do this today? And Treaty 8 is a good example of, let's practice that. Maybe each event we can showcase somebody else, another First Nation within Treaty 8. And all, all of us, different Crees, we have, you know, all, all our different cultures as well. Just because we're Crees doesn't mean this is just who we are. We have our own way of doing things. So let's practice honoring each other and what we know, because many of you here know what I'm talking about. It's in your heart, it's in your DNA. So let's help each other bring this back and be proud of who we are. Only then can we begin that change, that being the change to undo all the stuff that has happened to us. I want to thank you for listening. Thank you.